Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel and in today's video we are going to be doing an unboxing and review of the Thermomate 1500 watt infrared heater. As with all my videos for full disclosure I did get contacted by Thermomate their support team over in South Carolina and they asked me to do a review on this product and I of course I said yes and they had sent this to me free of charge. But I am still going to go and review this unbiased and let, let you guys know what I think of it. We're going to check out the construction, some of the various features, and let's dig into it. The first step we're going to do is going to unbox and take everything out and inspect to make sure it made shipping okay. All right, we have the heater here, and it's actually pretty tall, and the it's actually got a decent amount of weight as well. The first thing we want to do before we even turn on the heater for the first time is that we have to install this bracket. They actually call it the fireproof bracket, and the main goal for this bracket is in the event that this tips over, one, it's got a shut off that switch inside that if it does fall over, it shuts the heater off, but with the heat still on the, on the metal, the bracket is going to prevent it from doing that so don't want to do that we're going to go and install the hardware it's just four phillips head screws and we're going to put the bracket in like this so the top side there's you'll see the four holes here i don't know if they can see that but there's two holes on each side for the screws you want to install it this way onto the heater you do not want to install it this way although you could Ideally, you want to have it here out of the way of the path of the heat. You don't want this to be hot as well. That's why they want you to install it closer to the top. Let's go ahead and install it. All right. So now, probably the easiest way is to do one side at a time. And they're self-tapping screws. There's not threads already there, but when, there will be once you use them for the first time. And that's it. Now, if this were to fall over, this would prevent the hot part of the heater from touching the ground that might be combustible. Now with the remote control, we're going to get that set up as well. It looks like it takes two AAA batteries inside. And in order to get that off, the battery door is located right here. And it's got a very small Phillips screw. I'm not sure why they do that. Also found that this piece comes out very easily. And you want to be aware of that it, it you can put install this two, both ways, whether the spring is on this side or the spring is on that side. You have a little locator pin right here. It can only go one way on the remote control here. You can see the little locator pin there. So just be aware that if there's, just think of it, if you have a spring that's on this side, you want this part to be on the other side. You don't want two springs on each side here. I think that's a little bit of a design flaw because this comes out too easily and that could easily be put back in the wrong place. But let's get some AAA batteries and install it. This should help. The two AAA batteries are in there. So the positive side goes with the smaller spring and the negative side, it goes with the larger spring and the buttons are on top. And you can see the locator pin is on the bottom. We'll just go ahead and put this on and then use a small screwdriver to hold it in place. And now we're ready to go. Now that we have it set up and ready to go, now I will say that this would normally be outside on a patio. We're just doing a demonstration inside for today. Don't be alarmed as well. This may stink a little bit and could stink like paint or, you know, just an off smell. That would likely burn off within the first couple minutes of it running. It is a brand new unit. It's never been used before. In order to turn it on, there is a large power switch here on the bottom. We're going to turn that on. You're going to hear a beep 
and you have this really nice ring here, LED ring, and right now it is off, and now you can, the red LEDs mean that there's eight sections, and there's eight different available power settings, so the smallest, or the, the lowest setting, I should say, and then you use this rotary knob to bring it up. Ooh, that's hot. Whoa, that's hot. Very smooth operation. Now you press this button, it's gonna have a green ring now. This is a timer for how long that the heater is going to run. So you press it, every single segment that's on here indicates one hour. I could set it for three hours to run at whatever heat setting I want before it will shut off automatically. Nice little feature. But I'm gonna just turn off the timer here, go back to the heat setting, just using this rotary knob here. That is very hot, <laughs> and it should be. Now, in order to do, there, this also has an oscillation feature, and I am not sure, actually, I, can, I think you can do this with the remote control. Looks like you can turn on the oscillation feature where it'll go from left to right, back and forth from the remote control. This is a nice thing to have. You can also adjust the heat, go and increase and bring it down. You press the gear, which will take you back to that timer. And then you can adjust the timer from your remote control if you so choose. But since we're just using this for heat demonstrations, that's what that means. And you can see the little red indicator. The infrared indicator is right here in order to receive the signal from the remote or have trouble, you know, point it directly at that. And I can turn off the oscillation and turn it back on from the remote. That's pretty cool. So when you're not sure, you have to check out the manual. You can actually turn on the oscillation. So if it's in heating mode, right now it's on the lowest setting. You press and hold, you'll hear a beep and it will turn on the oscillation that way. And same thing, if you want to turn it off, press and hold, it'll shut off the oscillation. Very cool. Now on the lowest setting, you get a little bit of heat coming from here and it's pretty comfortable. This would be great for, you know, if you don't need a lot of heat in your area. 1500 watts is, you know, 1500 watts, but the way that this is dispersing the heat you have a lot of surface area, and if I let's say if I bring this all the way up, <laughs> oh wow, that's actually really bright, and for sure the heat. I'm I think I'm in frame. Yeah, I'm in frame here. That is a lot of heat. Now, you, in order to adjust the timer, you have to have it. Now, when the red ring is blinking, that means it's on standby and it's off, and you can't go into the green ring unless it's in the heating mode. So if I go press this there's your green ring and i can set it for an hour two hours three hours so on and so forth but we're going to turn that off go back to heating mode and then if i wanted to do the oscillation again this will heat up an area very quickly <laughs> i'm feeling it on my knees for sure all right well this heater is really nice i'm actually very impressed with the interface i really like that red red ring interface with the dial. It just is very clean and clear to tell you how much heat setting you have it set to. The timer is a nice feature. I don't know if I would personally use it, but that's really nice to have, especially if you're outside and you forget to turn it off. At least there is a set time limit of when the unit would shut off. Looking in the manual, I am testing it in my office at the moment. However, the manual specifically states that this is an outdoor use only product. Now, that is what the manual says. I can honestly see a lot of people using this indoors, but it would have to be set up properly. It has to have plenty of clearance around it in order to prevent any kind of fires or anything from melting, because that does put out a lot of heat. At 1500 watts, full power, a 12 by 13 office of where I'm, where I'm doing this right now for the demonstration, it would get hot in here pretty quick. Also, I really like the fact that Thermomate has an American division over in North Charleston, South Carolina. They have a support number, they have a support email, and they are made in China. However, there seems to be a lot of good support. Thermomate's got a lot of different products, 
The other thing is that this does have a one year limited warranty and from the date of purchase, so that's good to have. A quick note on cleaning. Best way that I can see cleaning this without having to disassemble the entire unit, it would be a decent amount of work to have to remove all the screws to take this body of it off. You really want to make sure that everything is nice and clean where the reflector is inside and then also where the halogen tube is. You got to be very careful. If you don't want to go through that, and I'm probably not going to do that either, the best way I found to clean these heaters is to use an air compressor and just blast out any dust or hair, dog hair. I have two dogs in my house, so I'm typically going to be finding dog hair everywhere besides dust. Just use an air compressor to blast it out to clean it out, and then you should be good to go. All right, everyone, I'm gonna end the video here. I would definitely recommend this heater. It's a, it actually is very powerful, even though it's only 1500 watts, but that's still a very good size heater. I hope I covered on everything. If there's any questions about the heater that you might have, please leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer. A big thank you to Thermomate for all the support and for the help. Uh, this is, I've reviewed a couple of their products now and I'm really happy with the build quality that I'm seeing. And if there's any other, things that I didn't cover, please leave a comment. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next project.